Okay, let's begin <clears throat> on that really light note. Today I'm going to introduce you to Celtics, which is the screen writing software. There's a link here in your modules. And uh, as bad luck would have it for myself, I cannot log into my accounts. While I search for my login, you guys, instead of wasting your time, you can watch a tutorial that we were intending to watch anyway. Okay, uh, so you know your final assignment is to write three pages formatted as a screenplay. It could be either an original of yourself, of your own. You could write a scene to another existing script. If you wanted to send me the link to the script and say, hey, I decided to rewrite the end of this, you could do that. Um, <clears throat> last class, we looked at how to format for screenwriting, and it's uh, quite technical. Um, and here's a software that will uh, help you do it, easy as pie. So while I find out my... Uh, password or reset it or whatever you guys watch this nope you whatever you want well that's we were looking right, at in this episode I'm going to be showing you guys how to write a screenplay within the software Celtics if you haven't seen the other episodes, I'd recommend going back and look at them. I talk about screenplay structure in general, and in this one, I'm covering specifically the software and how to write the and how to write a screenplay inside the actual software. If you're looking for the free Celtics uh, desktop software for Mac or PC, you can find it at uh, this is one of the websites I found that has a free download. It is screenplayreaders.com slash Celtics right there. And there, if you scroll down to the very bottom of the page, you'll find a download link for Mac and PC, and it is free. So let's get into screenwriting here. I've got Celtics installed on my, on my PC here. I'm going to open it up, and it brings open this splash screen. And it brings open several templates that you can start. We're just going over film right now, so we're going to start filming. Uh, you can hit open from Celtics if you have a previous project. Right now, I'm just going to start a new one. I'm going to hit film. Software opens up, and we have a few different things here. Let's take a look at over the little project library here. Every project file that you save in Celtics can have several different screenplays in the same thing. Say you're writing a series or a bunch of short films, like a web series or something like that. Uh, you can go up to File, Save Project As. I'm going to save this to my desktop for right now. I'm just going to call this Web Series. Save. Save it to my desktop. And now let's say we're going to have more than one screenplay. Say we're going to have episode one, episode two, episode three. So within Celtics, this is kind of cool. You can actually go up here. Right now I've got one screenplay. Let's right click on this one. I'm going to rename this screenplay to episode one. And I can even put a name on it. The run. I don't know what to call it. Anyway, so that, that's the first episode for my web series. I hit OK. And now this screenplay here has been changed to episode one, the run. And now I'm going to go up and hit plus and add something else. I'm going to add a new screenplay. There's several options in here. I'm going to add a new, new screenplay. And this one I'm going to call episode two, The Walk. Such creativity here. So I'm going to hit OK. And notice it's made another screenplay. So I've got two screenplays. Let's do this one more time. Episode three, The Stand Still. And hit OK. And we've got three screenplays. Notice we've got these tabs up here. We've got episode one, episode two, episode three. So I'm just showing that you can make several different screenplays within one project file. If I hit uh, Control S and save my progress here, close my screenplay, uh, close out the software. Here is my Celtics project file right there. Now if I double click on this, it opens it up and everything's been restored. So this is pretty much like a Word document. I mean, you can just save it, close it, open it back up. So now we've got episode one. Okay, I'm going to close episode three, I'm going to close episode two, and I'm going to start working on episode one is what I've got open right now. Now, within Celtics, by the way, all these tabs down here belong to this one script right there. So you have typeset PDF. This is where you print your script out. We'll show this in a little bit here. You've got scratch pad for notes. you got index cards if you're doing the index card sort of method of writing. You've got a title page here. So I'm going to actually go to my title page and start off with my title page. You bring up title page, it brings up this little title by the author. I'm going to call this... 
put my name based on if it's based on a book or something like that, based on work, copyright. Ooh, I'm going to copyright my thing to 2016 contact information. Channing Low. Let me put my address on there. 666 Satan Lane. Don't come visit me, please. Uh, hell. Um, 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 where, where's hell? Um, Hello, Earth. Idaho. Just, oh. uh, I love Idaho. Uh, eight four six five one two six five six. There we go. So that's where I live in Hell, Idaho. But Idaho's great. So sorry, Idaho people. Yeah, they a lot of got got a lot of cool locations. Okay, I'm gonna stop making excuses here. Uh, there we go. So I've got my title page. I'm gonna go to script and start writing my and start writing my movie here. Okay, we're gonna start out with now. Notice we've got this little pull down menu right here. It starts out on a scene heading. Whatever you pull, if you pull this down and select something else, it turns into action. If you click scene heading, it turns into a scene heading. So now I've got like action on the top that messes things up because you always start with a scene heading here. So first of all, I'm gonna write. Let's go interior, high school. Now if we're putting something like a high school and we want it to be in a if we're putting something like a high school and we want to put it in a very specific location in the high school, say like a chemistry lab, I'm going to put one hyphen, hyphen there. Oop, high school is two words. And I'm going to say hyphen chemistry lab, another hyphen day. You can put just one specific location like this and then just do hyphen day. Or you can put like, if you can put like a high school chemistry lab day if you want to get very specific that this is in high school and it's in the chemistry lab of the high school. All you have to remember in Celtics are the commands return, 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 tab, and tab, tab. And in some instances, I think tab, tab, tab. Anyway, let's go through this and see what it does. So we hit return, and notice that all of a sudden it turns to an action prompt. When we start writing action, first of all, we're going to describe the setting. So I'm going to start off by describing the setting here. I'm going to say a lab is a large room with several old computers. The lights are dim and several bored high school students stare at an image projected on the screen in the middle of the room. So now we're starting to describe what's taking place in the room. We described that it's a large room with several old computers and that there are several high school students that are just sitting there staring at a screen. So now, uh, one suggestion with writing action is just to break it up and to kind of make it make it a little easier to, a couple things, to make it easier to read, to kind of stick to the minute per page rule, the minute per page rule, you got to break up your paragraphs. Uh, let me zoom this up a little bit. So what we're going to do here is we're pretty much going to use one to two sentences per par paragraph tops. And maybe in some instances, uh, three sentences per paragraph. But you want to keep them fairly short. This kind of puts it in shootable paragraphs. So it's easy to read. It's easy to shoot. You kind of look through it and see what needs to be done piece by piece. If you have one big bulky paragraph, it's going to be really difficult to read. So right now I'm going to hit enter or return and it automatically goes to another action prompt. It has a space, single space between those, and I can start writing the next thing. These paragraphs are kind of like thoughts, little thoughts that are uh, divides up the scene. So let's introduce a character here. We'll say Ted, and I'm going to put in parentheses Ted's age. 40. Stands at the... So Ted stands at the front of the room, staring at all the students. Now we're going to put a quick description on Ted. We're not going to put a big description on the on the high school students because there's a lot of high school students that can be kind of figured out later in pre-production and production. Right now, Ted is a main character. We've introduced Ted by name. So we are going to put a basic description on Ted. I've introduced Ted. Once again, I've described the room, described who's in the room. Now we're specifically looking at Ted. And now we're going to describe Ted. You want to physically describe this person that's important to the story. So now we're saying Ted wears an old dirty t-shirt and ripped up Levi's. He also sports a mohawk and a tear tattoo below his left eye. I'm going to put a high frame right there, tear tattoo below his left eye. So now we're starting to describe who this person is and what they kind of look like. Remember, films are very visual, so we are describing this person and what the person looks like since it's a main character. So now that we've introduced the setting, we've introduced the character, the main character, uh, now we can start really describing the action. Notice these are two short paragraphs. I'm going to hit return, and we got two sentences in there. Return goes to a new paragraph. I'm going to start typing the description. And notice we don't have it in all caps because we've already introduced Ted in all caps, and now he, we're just going with regular uh, with a regular proper noun here. 
So Ted point, so now we're going into action here. We're doing it all in present tense. Ted points at the projected image on the screen. The image portrays a large group of people protesting in the streets of a large city. So now we've done a little bit of action. We're describing what Ted is doing. We can hit return. Let's say we want to go to dialogue here. Ted starts speaking right here. So I'll hit return from this paragraph. It goes down to a new paragraph. But now if I want to do Ted speaking, all you have to do is hit tab. Tab jumps over to, look up here, character. This here, this cursor is now typing character. I'm going to type in Ted, hit return, and automatically it goes to the dialogue prompt. So Ted can actually speak. So now I can say what, what Ted is going to say here. We're going to write what Ted says. So Ted kind of yells here, look at this, people are pissed. So uh, now let's say we want to have some student raise his or her hand and speak here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit return. We're not going to put that student's name yet because we haven't, we have yet to introduce that person. So let's quickly introduce the person that's going to speak. I hit return and notice it goes to the character prompt, assuming that it's going, that somebody else is going to speak, but I don't want to add a character. I want it at a new paragraph. So I'm going to hit return again and it jumps back to our action prompt. So now I can describe that person that speaks. One girl in the group, Katie, we can even put an age here. We can, she's a high school student, so maybe 16, raises her hand and quickly responds. And if we can, we can put a quick description if it's kind of important to the character right here, a quick physical description, or we can just kind of move on if it's just kind of a generic high school student. So you might want to put a little description there, but after you're done with that, you're going to hit return and now tab to go to the dial, go to the character prompt. We'll type in Katie, we'll hit return, and now we can actually type in what she's saying. So she says, is this photo for real? So now we're gonna hit return and it goes to a dialogue prompt. We can type in Ted now. And actually, as you start typing it, if you've already typed in Ted, when you type a T, it'll bring up the name and you can actually just hit enter. So we type in T and it's going to bring up Ted's name there. So it's a quick shortcut. We've already used his name. So now his name's been added to the catalog. All you have to do is hit return because it's highlighted and Ted's name is there. Now I'm going to do a parenthesis here. I'm going, to, I'm going to do parenthetical. We're going to hit return, but I want parentheticals right below his name. So all you have to do from here is hit tab. It jumps to parentheticals. Type in what he looks like here. It's like, like shocked face. So now we don't have to put that in description because we put this together with the dialogue. Just two words there, shocked face. So he says with a shocked face, what, what the hell do you mean? Is it real? So we hit return and it jumps back to the character prompt and now she can respond. Hit K, it brings up Katie, hit enter, uh, hit return again and it jumps down to the dialogue prom prompt. You know what I mean. Okay. So right there, let's say we're going to end this scene. We want Ted, we want to transition to a new scene. Let's try how to do that. So I'm going to hit return and we'll say Ted suddenly So Ted suddenly screams loudly and waves his arms in the air. He turns and speeds out of the room. The students sit and stare at the doorway as if they have seen this all before. So that's the end of the scene there. Let's go out into the hallway. So what we do is when we do a new scene heading, that means we change locations. Even if it's as simple as going from a the classroom out into the hallway, that is a scene change. Even if somebody walks from, if we have one scene where, where we see somebody walk out of the classroom, walk into the hallway, then walk into the bathroom, that is actually three different scenes. You have interior classroom, interior hallway, and interior bathroom. And even if it's a simple like movement when you just have three shots of somebody walking from the room to the hallway, to the bathroom it still is three different scenes so now if we want to go to a different location here we can hit return and now we want say we want to start a new scene notice this is on action up here if i hit return again it starts a new scene heading so return return starts a new scene heading so now i can write interior high school right there we got the high school chemistry lab i'm just going to arrow down and select that to shorten this up and go back and change this to hallway and what some screenwriters will do here is eliminate day. This kind of impl implies that this is one continuation from this scene to the next. If you put day, it kind of implies that this is a brand new scene with a, um, with an advance in time. That uh, this is a, a get, it's uh, missing a gap of time that it's like moves to and maybe another day or something like that. So I'm gonna do interior hallway, and I'm not gonna put day because it implies that this is the same day. You hit return, and then you can continue establishing the hallway, describing the hallway 
And if we've already described Ted, and if it's just a continuation of the previous scene, we don't need to describe him again. And uh, if it goes into a new scene and he's dr dressed differently, then we will need to describe his new clothing, but quickly. This is all about being kind of quick and efficient, but those are the basics there of, uh, those are the basics of, of screenwriting there with the four elements that we described. Okay, let's describe uh, extensions right now. So let's say up here that somebody outside in the hallway uh, screams, and we don't see them on screen, but we hear a voice uh, screaming. I'm going to hit return, return again. I'm going to say a voice interrupts Katie. I'm going to hit enter, tab over, and we're going to say if we've introduced a character before, uh, we, we can use that person's name, uh, or we can just use a simple... A simple explanation like if, if it's vague and we don't want that person revealed yet, we can say man's voice. And I'm going to add the extension right here. I'm going to hit parentheses. I'm going to hit a parenthesis and I'm going to say O dot S dot. And that means off screen. That means it's probably like out in the hallway or something like that. I'll just say, I don't know, some random. So somebody out in the hallway yells, where is Ted? Uh, we can, now we can put like description in. Uh, the students look, turn their heads toward the toward the doorway or something like that. But that is an extension right there. Now, if you're doing phone conversations and you see you hear somebody over the phone but you don't see them, this would be as simple as just saying, "Let's turn this into a character's name here." We'll say John. Something simple there. We're gonna go to these parentheses and add B O. Uh, that's if it's narration or if it is uh, a phone conversation you don't see them. That is, uh, and some uh, screenwriters debate whether or not to use VO or off screen there. Some use off screen for phone calls. I see it more commonly used as VO for phone calls. Transitions. Once again, uh, transitions are used mainly for shooting scripts when the directors get preparing. To get to a transition, you can hit return, go up to this little drop down menu, and hit transition. And it will drop this cursor all the way over here. Uh, and now you can type, so transitions belong on the right hand side of the screen over here. And now I can say to, say, dissolve to interior high school hallway. So now we're going to dissolve to that. Or you can put cut to, uh, you can put basically anything that you want to there. Fade in, fade out, and that's a transition. Last thing that I want to cover is a montage. Montages are usually done by simply doing this. You just go to a new scene heading and write montage. This is something like uh, you'll see like a couple that they finally get together and then they start enjoying each other and it goes from one shot of them sitting out having a picnic, one shot of them having a glass of wine in a restaurant, one shot of them holding hands and, and walking through the park and it just goes through a little montage with maybe some music playing and then you just basically describe the montage. So each paragraph will represent a new scene. You don't have to do a scene heading for each new shot that it cuts to. So you're just basically going to say Ted and Joanna sit on a picnic blanket in the park and laugh loudly. Hit enter, and now we go to a new, so then it cuts to a new shot. Ted and Joanna sit in a restaurant and sip wine. The waiter delivers their lobster dinner. They smile at each other lovingly. So it's just going from shot to shot. Let's do one more. Then you want to sit on a porch swing of a beautiful home, they kiss. So there we go. There's three different shots. This is a montage right there. And then as you go ex exit a montage, then you just go back to another scene heading. Return, return, goes to a new scene heading. And that's an example of a montage. So, all right, well, thank you for watching. This is just kind of basic screenplay structure. What I really recommend you guys do is uh, if you're interested in really writing and becoming a professional at it, what you need to do is you start reading a bunch of screenwriting books and also read a lot of screenplays. One website that I recommend is simplyscripts.com. Simplyscripts.com has a whole bunch of professional screenplays of movies that have been shot, a lot of Hollywood films. If you go up to the top and go to movie scripts, it will load and you can look through. They usually have a featured screenplay up here or you can go down and search it by or you can go down and search scripts by letters they have a ton of screenplays a ton of professional screenplays that you can read through let's click on this one here and take a look at it clicking on that link we're going to download and read the script and now you can scroll through it and look at this looks like a shooting script here because it has the scene numbers on the side and it has uh continued here as well so as we move down you can see your scene heading with the hyphens on it you can see your action or description you see the character name parentheticals, dialogue, you see the whole thing here. Uh, and you can read through it. And what I really recommend doing is reading through th through a couple like feature length scripts or, or more and see how the professionals have done it. You're going to learn a lot more by reading the pro these professional screenplays than by just going at it yourself. 
So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please post them and I will see you in future episodes. Thank you. If you're interested in seeing the... Uh, questions about that? So with the assignment, um, we're not... We're, what's, I'm trying to understand the extent of where we're doing it. Like if we do a TV episode or if we write a, rewrite a scene in a movie, we're, we're not obviously rewriting the entire movie. Or we're, or, right, or exactly. Are we yeah. rewriting like an entire episode if we do a no. TV you're writing three pages, so typically an episode would be 24 or something, so you're writing three. So you might write a new final act for the script. You might write an act for an existing show. So it might be, you know, you could decide you really like Law and & Order, and you might write the first act of a Law & Order, which would contain, you know, the murder, the, you know, the, the kind of setup. That might run to, you know, maybe double three pages. So consider whether you really want to do this or not, but you're required for three. Or you might write a standalone webisode, which would be, you know, a short, a short uh, series that would appear on YouTube or something, which would be a lot shorter than a half hour or an hour long TV drama. So those are your choices. When it says here you may write a new final act for the script that you analyzed, I used to make people do that. That was, you didn't have any choice. You just, the first thing you had to do was analyze a script, say what is the dramatic structure, what's going on, what's the setup, and then think, okay, what would be a more interesting end than is already here? And you would write the last three pages of that. Um, but I just found that that maybe caused too many, you know, questions or difficulties or stuff. And really what we are wanting to do is to try out that format that was just demonstrated and, you know, uh, do something satisfying for yourselves in terms of creating scene, using characters, and maybe characters from a show that you know already, which is great, because often when you're trying to break into writing, you will write spec scripts, like scripts for shows that exist already. And because the people that you're shopping them around to have read, know those shows and stuff, they have an idea, oh, I know what this character should sound like, I know what this person should be like. So um, there's actually, you know, quite a tradition of writing a script for a show that already exists. But in this case, it's not a whole episode. It's a good question, Jenny. It's just part of, part of an episode. Like an act. Like an yeah, yeah and an act, you know, would typically run to you know, eight pages or so, so, this may be, this is, what's required is less than an act. Because yeah. it's like a, a page equivalent to about a minute, right? Yeah. So um, yeah, ideally could, it'd be around three minutes or so, but it can that, go longer. Uh, uh, yes, and I would say that it's not ideal, it's just what you want. That's what's oh, required. Okay, cool. At That's, least three minutes. Uh, yes. All right. Yeah, but if I write that, people feel, well, to do well, I have to write more, which is not the case. All right. uh, you just need to do at least three, and if it pleases you to do more because that's your idea, great. The more, you know, fantastic. So um, the, tutorial, the tutorial on Celtics suggested that you have to download an app onto your computer, but that hasn't been my experience, and now that I hope I have found my login while you guys were looking at that guy, um, there's a web-based uh, interface here. You, you'll need an account. I've never received any spam that I know comes from Celtics. I certainly didn't notice an uptick in spam when I first signed up. So uh, um, you don't need to download anything. You can do it all in your browser. And uh, the controls are quite similar to what uh, was shown in the, um, in the tutorial that we just looked at. Let's see here. Something I probably did in class last time. Yeah, so you'll recognize uh, very much the same uh, thing. Uh, you can switch between different indents uh, this way, right? So you go out to scene heading three and interior. Oh, I was at Chasing Lions Cafe last time. It's closed, what a shame. Let's go back to interior classroom and uh, uh, 
uh, so on. So if you hit return, just like he showed you, so no need to repeat it all, but uh, students still listen to lecture and so on. There you go. And if we hit return and then tab, it does just what he said, it goes over the character. So we've got Monica and then uh, return and we can go in for, we don't want dialogue, we're going to want a parenthetical snaps. All caps, snaps figures, and then uh, so on and so forth. Then it goes to dialogue. Cool, he says. Whoops. Snap There you go. Cool. All right, Professor. cool. There you are. And uh, you notice transition down here, so fade out would be the end of it all. Um, and what else do we have to know about this thing? Uh, when it comes time to actually deliver this, uh, okay, let's first off see. You have to export it as a PDF. Uh, I won't be able to read it if you just save it as a um, Celtex local file on your computer. So what if I just hit print here? Uh, there it goes. So it will print to PDF. So just hit print. You'll see it if you're happy. Download to your computer and that's what you would turn in. So that's pretty simple. And imagine you used to have to do all this on a typewriter before. So thank you Celtics. Um, so this is the free version and uh, if you're ever prompted for an upgrade, uh, don't do it. Or at least I'm not telling you to do it. If you want to subscribe to it, great. Some of the features that it offers uh, are more than three script projects at once. So this will cap your limit at three. So you, as you write more, you can't save them up there. There are also uh, restrictions. This is a, uh, offers a cloud-based uh, collaborative writing environment. So several people could write on the same script here, uh, but that requires you to subscribe. And uh, so it'll, it'll tell you more of the amazing things that you can get if you subscribe or wherever it is. Where is it? Studio? Uh, somewhere. Whatever. Uh, so it's worth it. And uh, boy, can this thing do a whole lot more. It can generate a shot list. It can generate schedules. You can do budgeting. However, these are gonna, some of these are restricted to um, uh, premium versions. Uh, storyboarding, index cards, which can be kind of useful. Let's see if it actually displays any of these for me. Uh, I'm not sure if it's telling me that it can or it can't. Let's see. There it is. Uh, so when, uh, I don't know why it only, I guess it's giving me a new project. Subscribe to Story Development Plan to access this feature. There you go. Darn. But you can use your very own uh, uh, cards. Um, so one of the steps of uh, like feature film screenwriting uh, is to, uh, you remember we talked about an outline? So you'd have an outline as to what happens in each scene. And sometimes uh, in thinking through, it's, uh, it's fun instead of to have a list on a paper, which is hard to move around, to write your outline points onto uh, index cards and then move them around. And you can reorder them and you can change a scene and put in a new index card. Um, so when my friend and I were writing a screenplay together, we had like a big, you know, pegboard and we'd tack up index cards and then go away and a few days later come back and shift them around and do other stuff. So that could be helpful to, uh, to sort of plan out your story. So if you pay extra, this will uh, do it for you. But at any rate, this is, um, this is what you need. And this will help make it so much easier to, um, <clears throat> to format it correctly, because uh, it does all of it for you. You don't have to worry about it. Cool. Uh, a few other tips that he was talking about, even though he was doing a tutorial, he mentioned it should all be in present tense. So in your descriptions, it should be, you know, students listen to lecture attentively. It shouldn't be students were listening to lecture attentively and stuff. Um, keep things as short and economical as possible. The first time you see an important character, put them in uh, all caps. Afterwards, you don't need to. 
Uh, all caps can also be used to emphasize certain things like a loud explosion or something like that. It's okay to use caps for that even though it's not a, a physical object or a character that we're meeting. Um, and you know, this goes way deep because there's such a long history of, uh, of uh, screenwriting and all, but uh, you know, this, this software should take all of that really and make it easy for you, which is wonderful. Uh, it also does uh, what's the script tour. Is this going to? I don't know. We don't want a tour here. But uh, there are different kinds of script templates I wanted to share with you. So maybe it's in Production Studio. Here we go. Corporate script. Let's take a look. Uh, nope. That's not what we want. This will also have a template for two column scripts and uh, other kinds. So where are they? There? Do a new project. Well, let's see. Yeah, stage play, audio. Yeah, maybe this one will have two. Already have a script at all. I'm not sure. Let's see if this comes up two columns. One of them will. It used to just plainly say two column script. Uh, let's go corporate. Oops. Great typist. Great project. Let's see what comes up here. Let's not waste time on this. However, you can get two columns, which would be great for your audiovisual type scripts as well. So you may wind up using this for news too, if you like. Cool. So that's it all about uh, Celtics. Again, they'll try furiously to sell you upgrades, but um, you don't need to, and you don't need to download and install anything in your computer. You can. Know, just use it through the web app, but you do need to sign in. Unfortunately, I don't think there's any questions about this. Okay, cool. Next up, uh, a little bit more about writing. Carmen, you really do that. Uh, let's have a look here. More about screenwriting in PowerPoint. The rest of class today, we're going to do a little bit of thinking or working on dialogue and character. Uh, so once again, reminder that uh, our go-to document, our unofficial textbook, is the PDF called Crash Course in Screenwriting. It's in the modules. Um, this is drawn from there. Uh, <clears throat> so film and video, uh, film and television, or visual media, you have uh, a certain amount of time dedicated to audio and video. So it's a good idea not to have dialogue wall to wall unless your characters are really talky and you don't feel like doing much with a camera. Uh, but just like in our uh, uh, advertising uh, work, we thought about visual metaphor. Just don't, don't forget that um, TV and movies bring to the stage play <clears throat> the ability to have different Locations, lighting effects, time transitions, all kinds of things that you can do in film and television that are much harder to pull off on the stage. So do try to take advantage of those things with, rather than filling everything with dialogue, which can sound a little stagey. But that's OK at this point. Uh, if you want to write something with a lot of dialogue, go for it. Uh, we experience characters through their interchange. So this is something uh, to think of as well. Character has to be expressed externally. Unlike a novel, we can't get into people's heads. And it starts sounding pretty weird when characters you know, uh, tell us exactly what's going on in their heads. More naturalistic dialogue, people don't tend to say exactly what they're thinking all the time. And sometimes we don't even know what we're thinking in order to say it coherently. So. Uh, uh, we have to watch characters interact with one another, and we have to uh, see them behave and see them dressed. And that's why there's so much emphasis on description as well when we first meet a character and stuff. We're trying to read from them different, different aspects. Uh, thinking about House, um, <clears throat> what, are, what are some aspects of House that creates its character? We saw this last week. Misanthropic. Misanthropic, how is that, how is that expressed? rude. 
he's rude. So in the dialogue, let's say he's rude. Yeah. Other things? His physical appearance. He looks like he doesn't care about the job. He's not in scrubs. He's got this kind of wild-eyed, barely shaved. Yep, yep. Kind of costume. No scrubs. Uh, <laughs> you know, Posture. et cetera. Costume. That's basically it, but that's very good. And you also mentioned uh, not shaved. That's another good one, right? If he cared, he would shave, probably. He's a permanent two-day shadow. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Specify. And that's something you might write about, House, the first time we see him. Two-day shadow. Okay, great. Other things? How about his, well, dialogue is a pro, well, how about habitual behaviors? What does he do behaviorally? Not in dialogue, but... He does this thing, I noticed, where he leans forward on his cane, kind of bulge-eyed when he wants to make a point ah. to, like, make sure you feel wrong. <laughs> he follows it up with the same facial okay. expression every time. Right, and where would we put it? I don't know, let's, let's make a separate thing for expression. Uh, okay, so bulge-eyed. Purses his lips. Expression. The lip purse. And so on. So he leans on the cane, and the cane is pretty central to his character, right? It tells us it's more than just a prop. It also has part of the, the house story is that he uh, um, he's in continual pain. So he's a dope addict. Yeah. That, that leads on to, uh, he's, uh, so he's in pain, uh, he's opioid addicted, uh, and he, um, apparently, this goes back to uh, a medical episode where his ex-wife uh, practically had his leg amputated because he was really, really sick. Season 1, episode 21, three stories, check it out, a brilliant episode. In fact, it's one of the only ones that doesn't conform to the strict structure we were talking about. It's called Three Stories. Is that a dream? Uh, no, he's actually doing a lecture in front of a group of medical students. And so in his typical put down nasty way, uh, he comes up with three different stories about someone who's sick. They've got, you know, brown blood or something. And, and uh, it turns out, I won't even spoil it, but it turns out it's closer to house than you thought. Uh, and it's, it's a brilliant kind of Rashomonian. Rashomon? People have seen that film where the same story is so told several times. Uh, in this case, the, the, new, the normal structure of house is completely exploded because he's telling three different stories and he keeps changing the actors in them. And, going all over the place with it, and the students are baffled and confused. And then eventually he goes, like, end of the third act, it just like comes into focus. It's an amazing piece of writing. Anyhow, three stories, highly recommended. Uh, uh, and, and also the interactions with characters are very important about, uh, <clears throat> about revealing, <coughs> excuse me, House's character. Uh, so. Of course, that would include dialogue. Up here, we should talk about, you know, just does he have an accent? Uh, you know, does he have a tone, etc. But puts down. A lot of emphasis on specific words. Pardon me. Whatever. Like. Yeah, he puts. Yeah. Yes. He and that. That. Yes. Uh, interactions with other characters, of course. He's got his friend Wilson, who's sort of the nice guy doctor but who also serves as a kind of a settle down house. Uh, you know, uh, you, I, I love you and you're great, but you're also nuts. So, so Wilson is kind of a voice of reason in some ways, and yet he's nowhere near as brilliant as House. And then there's Cuddy, the boss, uh, with whom he spars of, over things like, should he do the rounds? Uh, so Cuddy brings out his anti-authoritarian aspect you know he's always rebelling against her and of course when they got desperate in later seasons I think they even constructed a kind of a romance happening there which is like really ridiculous uh, versus Wilson who's more let's say sort of like his conscience sometimes although house seems really impervious to being you know convinced to care about other people and you know, even in the content of the dialogue, so many times, even in that episode that we looked at, you'll hear, you know, 
you'll hear him you know, say, I am a board qualified physician and so on. So this is making jokes, which constantly emphasize how he doesn't care about people. He doesn't. So within the dialogue, there's you know, a lot of effort expended in terms of hammering home a few kind of character traits. Um, so all of this, again, was to try to demonstrate we experience characters through their interchange, in other words, through these kinds of interactions, or the way we see them, the way, the way that, you know, that we can't get in their heads, so we have to interpret what we see from the outside. And, uh, um, of course, these are not real people. Uh, I would advise against writing yourself as a character because we all know ourselves inside and out and we all know how complex we are versus characters really work better if you can define a kind of a smaller subset of, of characteristics that work for you in your script, you know. So it's probably a good idea to, I, I always try to think of characters as sort of like a, 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 you know, a bundle of traits like this with motivation, with something that they want to accomplish rather than a fully rounded three-dimensional person with, you know, uh, everything about that because I could never write that. Maybe. No, one, no one's saying that I'm a good writer, but I think this is just more manageable to actually to pull off. And to always be aware that, you know, if you're writing a description, how are you going to express this vision of a character that you have as you write that description? Uh, you know, as you write action, uh, you know, it's like House you know, leans forward and bugs his eyes and says, really? You think so? And so on. So, you know, if you keep a, a little list running beside you, you can just remember as you're writing, there's so much going in, that you can pay attention to this, I guess. So a lot of uh, uh, television, especially, involves a couple of people meeting and talking, you know, and uh, there are particular ways that we shoot that, which we cover in our production classes, you know, shot, reverse shot, over the shoulder, it's just like, Two shot, everyone's together, back. It's, it, so the dialogue needs to be scripted that way. And then occasionally you'll have larger action, action pieces with more characters, and, um, maybe a little harder to write. But uh, uh, so the, the fundamental unit of drama is the scene, the more drama, screen, screenplay writing anyway, is the scene. Um, and typically you've got more than one character doing something in most of your scenes because just having one person sitting there makes it kind of hard to express much. Occasionally, someone sitting there doing nothing can really be very expressive, too. So uh, they meet somewhere. Uh, something happens. Um, typically, when talking about two characters, sort of before you write any dialogue, you kind of want to decide what's going on. So uh, if you were writing a longer piece, you might uh, have a story outline or your cards, and you'd be thinking about, okay, what happens in my first act? What happens in my second act and stuff? And you know, maybe even have the acts delineated. And uh, uh, when it comes down to actually thinking scene by scene, you sort of know my story. Well, I have to establish this happens, that happens. Um, so before you write dialogue, think about, okay, so who are the characters involved? Where are they meeting? What do they want out of the scene? So if you can establish a strong motivation, that can really lead you through writing uh, and, and give you a conviction that, yeah, I've accomplished what I needed to do. You know, my character needs to try to wriggle out of the job that he's supposed to do because he hates it. Um, the other character, Cuddy, wants him to do what he's supposed to do. And he ultimately has to because she's his boss. Uh, so then the next scene, you know, House is uh, discontent and he's going to start uh, performing for everybody in the waiting room, um, doing one of his housey scenes, which was, was a lot of fun. So uh, at that point, his motivation is to discourage more people from coming in and consulting with him uh, so that he doesn't have to do any work. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, it is really good to know the, the motivations. What does each character want out of the scene? It makes it much easier to write. 
Uh, when? You notice we're who, where, what, when. When do we cut into the scene? Um, so uh, this is a really short assignment. You've only got three pages, or you can go well beyond it if you like. But be sure that you're being economical with your time. Um, uh, there's a, a tendency to write scenes um, as with, with a lot of lead-in time to the actual action. It's like um, um, employee wants to talk to the boss about a day off, and the scene, you want it to be natural, so the first thing you do is like knock, knock, and the employee comes in, hello, uh, how's everything? Oh, things are good. Uh, you know, um, did you get that report I sent you by email yesterday? Yes, I did, thank you. Didn't have a chance to look at it yet. So it's like on the fifth line, it's like, um, I, I, I need some time off to go. My wife is sick, I need to take her to the doctor or something like that. So you could cut those first four lines and you wrote them because you're thinking, well, nobody just walks into the office and asks about it, right? Yeah, so, uh, but you can always, you know, cut into the scene when the character's already in the office. So uh, a lot of tightening things up turns out to be, you know, you write kind of uh, loosely and naturalistically, and then you realize, hey, I can cut in 15, 20 seconds earlier into this and make my story move much better, much faster. So think about, you know, as you, when you've written, or even as you've written, when is the latest point you can come into a scene and still accomplish what you need to accomplish. Even if it feels a little bit kind of rushed in terms of the way real life works, in terms of screen storytelling, uh, people want you to move fast. They want more, you know, more, uh, more story in most cases, unless, you know, you've got a dramatic moment that needs time. Uh, but yeah, so as late as possible is a good recommendation. Why are we seeing this in relation to the whole story you want to tell? Does this, uh, does this scene really matter? Or will they go and shoot it and then in the editing realize, hey, we could take that out and it doesn't make a difference. You know? They often take out entire scenes that did make a difference and the audience doesn't even know it. So you know, as, you're, as you're thinking, uh, what do I need this scene for? Make sure it's really justified. Uh, <clears throat> You can do other things by, you know, alluding or making, uh, you know, uh, reference to something else that happened earlier on that you don't have to show. So how is the protagonist going to get what she wants? So what is the strategy that's going to be used? You know, um, it has to do with motivation, but it's the, it's the, uh, the, the, the visible part of it. So more on page 75 of Crash Course about this. When it comes to writing dialogue in TV, there's generally more than in, what, did I just go backwards or something? Or am I yeah. going forward? Yeah, I did, thanks. Uh, realism, realistic dialogue. Characters have to talk like their world. So that doesn't mean necessarily they talk like everybody else. Uh, in genre dramas, dramas, you'll get professionals like all the medical lingo in house. Uh, everybody constantly does it. So. Um, Think about, again, if you're going to do a law enforcement thing, um, think, think about what kind of, how they would talk in that world and such. Uh, if it's somebody like House who's a you know, bit of a fish out of water, that can give you the opportunity to draw contrast between your character and the rest of the people. Um, so, and try not to bog us down with too many technical details or, or, or tech talk, if that's it. Uh, even sci-fi fantasies have realism. Uh, in a sense that, uh, you know, the world works in a certain way. So if you're writing for a script that already exists, you know, be sure to, um, be sure to respect those conventions. Uh, shows that are actually up and running, they have something called a Bible, which uh, is because most television shows are written by committee with a bunch of people, uh, maybe, you know, half dozen writers, maybe more. Uh, uh, Sooner or later, the, the, one of the documents created is, is a Bible which gives the backstory, the characters, and whatever else the creators feel uh, is necessary for writers to know about. Uh, Bibles are not typically accessible on the internet or stuff like that, but you can, I've seen some reprinted in books, so check out the library. Breaking up dialogue. Um, real talk uh, is boring because people talk forever and ever. 
Uh, script writing uh, tends to have smaller chunks of uh, dialogue, and they bounce back and forth, uh, ping pong sometimes, depending on the writer and the kind of characters that they're, that they're writing. Um, but you just try, in general, to keep your lines of dialogue shorter, and uh, you know, pass the ball back and forth between different characters as you write. Um, otherwise, you could write you know, a whole minute-long soliloquy, and it's not that interesting. Just like teachers, you never stop talking. So uh, we have here uh, a little exercise for the rest of class. Um, Again, this used to be for credit, but I used to have everybody in class. Now there's practically nobody. So you guys can do this if you like, I guess, because I feel bad about forcing you to do this and the people watching online don't have to. Online, could you guys figure out how to do this? A dialogue, <laughs> everyone can chat back and forth online. I don't know. So the idea here is that um, pick a pair of characters, like a movie star and a fanatic fan. And uh, these uh, dyads, these two characters, have been explicitly constructed so that there is a uh, contrast in motivation and in status. So you've got a movie star and a fanatic fan. The fanatic fan loves the movie star, wants to be with the movie star, and is subordinate to the movie star. The movie star you know, wants to get away and do whatever movie stars do, right? So, and check them out. I mean, the officer and the speeder. So, speeder's trying to talk their way out of a ticket. Officer's going to give a ticket. Officer is in a position of authority. Psychiatrist and patient, so on and so forth. So, uh, just looking over this list, uh, and it's a pretty long list, man and God. Um, so, I didn't write this list. Uh, this is a pretty common, oh, what the heck? Uh, it's uh, little sis and big sis, teacher and parent. Ooh, there's a good one. <laughs> Who's got authority there? <laughs> so uh, that's uh, pick a pick a pair, and spend the next 10, 10 minutes. Uh, we won't have time to read it back today. Well, uh, if you feel like doing this uh, over the next fifteen, and we'll read it back next class if you want. Uh, sit down uh, together, whoever you want to work with. Pick, pick a pair of characters and, uh, and just write an interaction. Uh, and uh, uh, I think part of this is when you're sitting there alone, it becomes hard to write dialogue all by yourself. Uh, but when you're sitting with somebody else, it can be um, fun just to figure out a, uh, a way of doing it. And if we have an odd number of people, so maybe uh, totally some people could fabulate another one. What's that, Shannon? I was going to say, I'll totally work alone. Oh, you want to work alone? Yeah. Oh, OK, if you guys like. I was going to suggest you could jump in with another group and create another character who's sort of involved or something. That's possible, too, if you like. Um, so yeah, I, I think this is good. Uh, a couple of years ago, before Trump was even a known figure, uh, Patrick Fitzgerald wrote, uh, it was Trump and his barber, <laughs> which is quite a funny scene. I wish I still had it. Um, so, uh, but, uh, you know, yeah, so go to it, 15 more minutes, and if you don't feel like doing it, just uh, uh, announce that you're done, and we'll see you next class. And uh, if you folks do this, then uh, I'd love to read it back next class if you want, but if you think it just didn't go anywhere, then, you know. So you two want to work together? Sure. Yep. JP, Stephanie, you guys want to work together? I don't have any. And Shannon? I guess so. Oh, or Stephanie, are you leaving? Sure. Oh, I'm not leaving. You're not? Yeah. Oh, you're picking a dyad? Yeah. Can you guys There's do nothing in the trunk. three together, or <laughs> Shannon wants to work on her own? I'm, ha I'm totally like happy working on my own. I'm okay. Like, you know what meets you. Oh my gosh, okay. If you like. You know, I mean, it's. it's do I have to say that? <laughs> All right, go for it. And we have like 12 minutes left today, so. Okay, so officer and speaker, what do you think? A man on a ledge. I think I'll be the speeder. Sure. <laughs> I, I, I have several ideas where I could take this, but they're all well, so I, bad. 
So, I had an end on something. If I'm telling you, put your hands where I can see them, put your hand. And then, I mean, there's a loud screeching sound from your glove. Loud, so that's, let me that's what a good happens. place to end it. I don't know. I was thinking, like, the cop opens the door and he's, like, up to his neck in water and all this fish flows out. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he, was driving, he was that driving. He was driving an aquarium. I don't know. So this can be scene one. I am done. All right. Fast to see. Okay. But let's. We'll let everyone. Uh, we got three minutes left. So we'll, those of you who wish to play them back or just read them out next class. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you. So is there going to be um, like a, a final as far as um, like questions about what we've been learning as well, kind of like the midterm was, or is our final going to be presenting yep. the screenplay? No, I mean, we'll read back the screenplay on the day. And then uh, in terms of questions for the exams, look at the, the web quizzes again for the, for the stuff that we have. Uh, Looked at. So is that going to be cumulated from the beginning? Or really? No. No. Really from the midterm. Okay, no, cool. no, it's, I have a lot of sure I open them all and up. Are we doing prep one of these days in class, or is it just going to be like prep at home? Uh, well, this it'll be next week. We're scheduled to look for these. Thursday. Oh, the prep, prep will be next week. Something really next week. Oh, yeah. Okay. Still workable. Yeah. So next week we're just reviewing the, for the midterm. Got it. I'm going to research squid on squid crime. <laughs>